I think everyone has an emotional attachment to a particular size hmm. of a church. Like when you think, close your eyes, what's the perfect church size? We kind of have this idea. So let's settle the issue for everybody once and for all. <laughs> so give me a number. What's the perfect size for the church? Yeah. Probably the church that you're pastoring right now, right? Yeah. Right. So is there a, seriously, is there a perfect size or is there an ideal size for a church? How do we think about that? Uh, and I, I think the answer is no, there is not an ideal size for a church. One, it's important to note, we don't actually get to determine what the size of any congregation that we pastor is. Mm -hmm. That is the Lord's doing. Yes, we put our, you know, our feet to the work and our hands to the plow and we try to disciple people into uh, equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. But, but whether a church is 50 or 5,000 is as a, as a congregation is not actually up to us at all. We might think it is. But it's not. And so there's a sense in which, particularly for pastors and ministry leaders, to, to really and truly leave that in the hands of the Lord. To say, what does it mean for me to be a faithful pastor or ministry leader in this place and, and give the, any increase over to the Lord? I've been right parts of churches, hundreds and hundreds of members, parts of churches, a hundred members or less, and seeing God be faithful in all of them. Now, right, for, sometimes for parishioners, it's a little bit more challenging to be a part of a, come into a smaller church context where, you know, you can't hide, <laughs> you know, you are, um, you are, you're identified very early and easily. But I would also say, even at a large church, if that church does hospitality well, mm -hmm. those people are not able to hide either. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And, and, so, and so the other thing I will say it, that's, that I think is important is that it is also sometimes determined by cultural contexts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just talk about here in the United States. If, You've got communities. So, for example, we've, we've, we have a network in our denomination of Mandarin speaking pastors. We're looking to plant churches that engage uh, Mandarin speaking Chinese immigrants. Well, we're not expecting that those churches are going to grow to be 2,000 member right. churches. Right. Right. Just don't have the numbers right. there. And that's very true for immigrant and refugee communities. When we strive to see churches planted and minister to people from those contexts who really very often do for the sake of, um, I would say, a cultural comfort. And I'm not saying this in a disparaging way, but you're in a foreign place. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's disorienting, can be disorienting to be disconnected from those cultural things as you're trying to um, uh, live out or engage the Christian faith. So sometimes there's a need mm -hmm. for culturally contextual, spe contextual specific congregations that we might expect right. to be smaller right. than others. So I think we have to just consider a number of things when we're, when we're trying to process well, what is an ideal church size. So, I mean, you, Mark, you've had a large congregation. And so, so we've wrestled with this question deeply because, and I've made a statement before, we have, we have 2,600 members. Um, and my comment uh, to our elders a number of years ago was, if we can't shepherd 2,600 members well, we shouldn't have 2,600 members. And so, my thing about church size is whether it's um, a few hundred or a few thousand, what has to happen is the, that congregation has to figure out ways to care for one another and specifically for elders to be able to shepherd the flock of God. And so in our situation, we've had to work really, really hard uh, dividing the congregation up into, we call them parishes. And so we've got 40 elders and 50 deacons all assigned to various uh, parishes so that when somebody joins our church, they come through that parish model to break down the congregation into groups of you know, 150 to 200 because 
um, a large church, it's, it's easy to, to fall through the cracks, right? At the same time, a small church, it's also really easy to not do shepherding well in the sense that it's more like a family, more like a clique that's hard to get into, right? And so sometimes shepherding happens really poorly in small churches, but can happen really well in large churches, or the reverse happens. So I think one of the keys is to realize that size in and of itself isn't necessarily an indicator of whether or not a church is healthy or that it's the ideal size. The question is, what are the leaders doing to try and make the most of the shepherding opportunity related to the people? And so a church could be 250 and hardly ideal, or it could be 3,000 and be ideal. I think it just depends upon the theological and pastoral commitments of the church and the people who are involved so that they can really live out what it means to care well for each other. Because I think that's really what the ideal church is. It's where people are known and loved and fed and protected uh, under the banner of the gospel. That's really, really good uh, take home point. Church size is not necessarily the indicator of church health. Absolutely. We gotta get that, right?